This is the all-new Honda ENY1, a mid-size electric SUV which wants to take the market by storm. It's going to go up against models like the Hyundai Kona Electric. So in this video, we're going to see how it might fare. This is the first of a new family of electric vehicles from Honda, which come over from China because that's where they're being built. But when this car arrives in the UK, it will face the likes of the Hyundai Kona Electric and the Volkswagen ID4, which means it should start at just under, or maybe if it comes in a higher spec, just over £40,000. Now this thing isn't due on roads until early next year, but we already know quite a few of the stats, starting with what it's going to be powered by. Now everything is concentrated under the bonnet up here, at least when it comes to the motor, and it will be producing around 200 horsepower and 310 10 newton meters at all which is pretty nippy and all of the power will be driven to the front wheels so it's going to be handling like a front wheel drive honda and something tells me they're pretty good at making those now power for that electric motor comes from a 68.8 kilowatt hour battery located very low in the car in fact it's kind of under the floor here which bodes pretty well for handling but it also means there's good space inside which we'll talk about in just a second now that battery can be charged up to 80 percent in about 45 minutes which is really competitive and it will give you 256 miles according to the manufacturer. So it's kind of bang on the money for this class. Even the way you charge the car is very functional indeed. Under the flap at the front here is where you'll find the ports. And when you plug it in, you'll see the lights up here. We'll tell you how the car is doing. If they go blue, that means it's taking charge like it is now. And while this car doesn't have the most striking design, it's pretty sensible on the outside, it does get a lot of new features. Just two specifications are available. One's the Elegance and the other is the Advance, which you see here. And they all come with this interesting rear design, a new light bar across here. And you might have noticed the Honda badges are now flat. They're no longer that 3D silver design. They're now a white badge that's completely flat. And look at this badge at the rear. We've got a new Honda logo on the tailgate here, which I think we're going to see on a lot more of these electric models. Now, the interior of this car is actually potentially its strongest place because it is really, really a great example of Japanese design, or I should actually say Japanese functionality. This cabin is really well thought out and really tidy. It's just like the Honda E and it's kind of crossed a little bit with the HRV as well. Now we've got two big screens ahead of us, which is standard practice these days. One just over 15 inches in size here and one just over 10 inches in size. And this one mixes bits that I recognize from the Civic, for example, and also the Honda E, although you don't get all of the theater of a fish tank for example across the dash and then this digital instrument cluster here is nice clear and crisp not the prettiest but does the job i really like the steering wheel in this car it's thin rimmed it just feels retro it feels like hondas of old and the seating position and the seats which i'm told have been reworked for comfort and long distance driving everything in here is very ergonomic even when i place my arms and rest my elbows it's really soft and nicely padded you could do miles in this car i'd imagine Oh, and this car also comes with Honda's quite innovative air conditioning solution. It doesn't blow powerful amounts of air out of each vent into your face or onto your legs. Instead, it works to just move air around the cabin at the temperature you've asked for. So not only does that mean it's more efficient, but it also means for people like me, you shouldn't get dry eye on long journeys. Quite cool this feature. And you can see the way when I shift the air conditioning around the cabin, it just blows in areas that aren't directly on your face. And of course, on this advanced model, you get lots of standard equipment. Driver assistance features are very good. You've got adaptive cruise control. You've also got steering assist and a heated steering wheel as well. And you do get standard leather seats, which are heated up front. And you get wireless phone charging as well. Plus there's loads of storage space in here. We've got two big cup holders down here. Nice bit of room under here. And there's lots of space in general. There is a sunroof above me and I've got lots and lots of headroom. It's a big car inside and I think it'll be quite big in the back as well. Now, you get into the back with some discreet handles which are hidden into the door frame. And actually, when you climb in, you realize there is a lot of room in this car. Firstly, I have loads and loads of leg room. I've set the seat ahead how I like it. And I can tuck my feet under the seat ahead and it, I've got loads and loads of knee room as well. I've got acres of the space actually. And same goes for above me. I've got a lot of headroom and this sunroof can actually be removed. It is a bit fiddly with these little controls down here, but you can actually take the whole thing out, which is pretty cool. Seats as well are very, very comfortable in the back. These are leather because we're in the top advanced model and they're really nicely cushioned. And I can feel the headrest behind me is also very supportive. It's just a lovely place to sit. You could spend ages and ages here. Now you do get a couple of USB-C ports down there, but you don't get anything else really apart from a couple of vents in this area. But if you don't have someone in the middle, of course, you've got your armrests and a couple of cup holders here as well. So this place is very, very practical. I think it's gonna be very popular with families, with kids who are not just small, maybe even teenagers as well. And it's pretty good in the boot as well because 
Unlike this car's sister model, the HRV, which has a battery in the boot because it's a hybrid. Well, this thing with its batteries in the floor and very low in the floor, there's loads of room in here. We've got space under the floor. And then even up here, there's easily enough space for a family suitcase up here. So good load room. And then when you lower these seats over here, well, then you have an almost, albeit with a lip here, an almost flat section here. And with this almost flat floor, you have a lot more space. So it means this is a very practical thing indeed. All right, so that is a first glimpse of the new ENY1, a car which we'll be hopefully driving sometime later this summer. But for now, we can tell it is brilliantly functional. It's got everything it needs to, to slot neatly into what is obviously one of the most competitive segments in the UK. It's already doing pretty well in China, but it'll be interesting to see how it fares on our roads especially. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Do you think this thing is going to be able to take on the might of the big sellers like the Hyundai Kona Electric, for example? Of course, this is a segment lots of British buyers are going for right now, so I'm sure you all have opinions. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the thumbs up button and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Not least because you're probably going to want to know what we think of this thing when we get to drive it later this year. Oh, and it doesn't stop there because Honda's pushing forward with a pair of new hybrid models, one in the form of the CRV plug-in hybrid and the other one being the hybrid ZRV. Look out for reviews on those in the coming months as well. See you soon.